inspiration from a few of the workshops I've watched and been to already. Okay. So my little names, I'm just going to be a little defining the uh, motivation, how we can create it in the, in the classroom, the initial phase, how we can maintain motivation for students, encourage it, and then maybe reflecting on ourselves and also teachers. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, what every student hates when I say so, um, can everybody, we have a little divide from I think Bridge Mills over here, Atlantic over here, Julie's our only uh, infiltrator over here. Big favour, any hot drinks in the way at the moment? Yes. Can you stand up please? Can you take somebody from a different school and stand face to face, please? Walk over here, can you over here? Over here. Over here. Motivates your partner. Too late. Oh, uh, <laughs> what motivates them, please? I'm sure they're. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about you. Uh, 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 more. Uh, more. Uh, uh, like in general, or in general? Uh, just want to uh, kind. Okay. Probably. Passion. Passion. Yeah, passionate person. Yeah. Well, we kind of we we didn't we weren't guessing each other because I already <laughs> expressed myself okay. before, before you you asked. So. Brilliant. We're saying that if like you're kind of always working towards something that you kind of always have, have something that you're you know, moving in the direction of. So your goal is something you're yeah. chasing all the time. Yeah. Perfect. Anybody seeing money? A room of EFL teachers, I didn't think money would be the motivation. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, guys, can you sit down for a nice ceremony, guys? Thank you very much. Hi, you go. Um, so you felt happy first, and how did you feel when you asked the question? Interested. Yeah. Interested? 
Yeah. 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 So you you thought about what motivated yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So what I want to do is reflect on what motivates you. You kind of need to know how can you motivate yourself if you want to make your students motivated. Okay. So uh, what the theorists say. Um, it's an umbrella term. What is motivation? Maybe um, why you do something, how willing you are, how much time you're willing to spend, and how hard you're willing to do it. Okay. Intrinsic for you. Extrinsic. What outside um, forces make you do something? Okay. So maybe for our students, it's uh, grades uh, needed for their job, for work, for um, a visa, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. The ideal self and the ought to self. What you uh, hear, what you hope to be, what you ought to be. So um, we have two different theories. Okay. So creating the initial phase in the in the classroom. Um, some ideas we've done. Um, I have a little handout here, guys. So on the first week of the course, um, especially for I think it's Jim's uh, talk about. The plateauing from intermediate and upper intermediate, which is probably the most uh, troublesome. Um, I got my students to create a little profile for themselves. Okay. So on the left, we have lots of jumbled up phrases. They need to make questions back to our lovely present perfect questions, and they need to write down some answers about what motivates them. Okay. So I've adapted this from. Face to face, upper intermediate. I have a love hate relationship with that book, but <laughs> sometimes you get a, a piece of gold and you just pass around there one for everybody in the audience. Okay? Has anybody start used these um, initial phrases at the start? Uh, profile what you want to achieve in their classroom before? Yeah, but more just as a general conversation rather than a class. General conversation, what, why are you here? So as you, can, as you can see, it's very uh, learner-centered. Mm. Reflect on what they've done before. You're, there's a gap fill missing here. You need to make a full, full question. Why do you study? How I feel about my English now? What I want to improve? Outside of class, what I want to do in class? And the last question, which is the most difficult thing. So you have this unrealistic aim. Everything up to that aim is a, is a positive thing. Okay. Um, uh, one of my colleagues, Brendan, has um, developed an in-class survey. How often do you speak in English? How often do you write in English? How often do you listen? It needs analysis. Do I need to improve those skills? Okay. So. Things we've already probably known ourselves. Um, in the classroom, creating motivation is really a, a friendly environment. Okay. So I think most of our teachers do this at the moment. Making a safe space, without using that word, a safe space in the classroom, very friendly, demystifying mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. I have countless messages from my friends asking to go for a quiet point, Q-U-I-T-E, your, your. Native speakers make mistakes. Students shouldn't feel afraid to make mistakes. Um, the fact that they're speaking to someone in a different language it's already an amazing thing. If you are explaining something in a different language in a different country over here living, you are already winning. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I try to instill this in my classroom. Very positive, positive um, environment. Okay. So my main character is here. Mm -hmm. uh, rapport. I, I rely heavily on this. I actually take an interest in students because I am interested. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of long term mm -hmm. students who can probably guess if you're fake interested and mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. questions. They're not, they know. What the crack is, we say, without using that word. Okay. Uh, personalization. Um, talked about uh, the Google Maps. You're living in Galway. How can I use this in my classroom? Uh, it's motivated me. Um, in the back of the New English file, I think we have um, uh, a direction task. Two guys in a, a random town in, in England. Is that relevant to me here in Galway? Pick a point. Do it. Personalize it. If this is in grammar on the board, I use students' names for stories. Mm -hmm. Referring back later, do you remember when we made this story about crime on the board and it was a criminal and we had all our um, prepositions for crime in it? Not do you remember uh, chapter 6C, page 75? It's easier to remember a personal, which motivates you. You have a personal experience motivates you. Mm -hmm. Cooperation, which we did there, 
repair work, you're more motivated. And the big one, learner autonomy. Okay? How do you promote learner autonomy in your class? How do you promote it? Don't Um can um somebody can everybody turn over their sheet? Uh oh. Brilliant, look at this. Can you hold your sheet for everybody? There's a beautiful sticker here. One activity I like to do is make the student the teacher, which I've seen in other workshops. Um you would give a not so confident student, or maybe a more confident student uh the role as a teacher, I would present them with the answers. Instructions, what to write on the board. I would swap there with their seat. For example, you will be the teacher now, but you can relax for the moment. Okay. <laughs> Simple task. Make the teacher. No. Yeah. Trace, trace, so sad. You got it. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. <laughs> because you're less confident. Yeah. <laughs> I often fix it a little. If it's a very, very shy student, I kind of cheat a little bit and make it a not so shy, painfully shy student. You, you can judge your class by building rapport. You know who's be comfortable in front of class and who will be too comfortable in front of class. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want the students seen in the show. Okay? <laughs> uh, another learner told me I like to use uh, nominating students. So when we're doing feedback, I would make students pick somebody else for the next question. It takes you away from it reduces TTT. Eventually, they start asking each other, oh, Colm, what did you get for question six? Colm, you pick a next person. They would ask each other what the next question is. You sit back, observe, and you promote and motivate them through their own learning autonomy. Okay? Good? So, um, positive self-reflection. Um, we have counter statements in our, CF, uh, in our curriculum framework and in the back of books. Maintaining throughout the course, there's a little progress portfolio in, in some books at the bottom. What can you do? So I've presented with present perfect this week. I've learned ten vocabulary words. What can I do with it now? Tick off at the end. I can talk about abilities in the past. Can you do this? Ask a little speaking task, prayer work. Check. I can speak. Give students more motivation throughout the course. Not just initial phase, throughout the course, end of every Friday, maybe before the test, what can I do, what have I learned? Okay? Evaluation. I like to prefer the word reflection. Because um, you're not really just more or less judging, more reflecting on you. Um, we often reflect on our own teachers and we reflect, <laughs> we evaluate the course. But have you ever got students to reflect on their own input at the end of the course? Yes? No. Nope. No. Nope. 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 So, reflect it on themselves. Mm -hmm. I have a little sample which I did on Google Drive survey, but I have a print form here. I can circulate this also. Okay. Just leave another one here, guys. Okay. So, when, if a student leaves or a student finishes their course, I might give them this. Okay? Your class 11, how do I feel now? I'm really, I'm really. Um, eliminating really negative words, not terrible, but unmotivated. How much effort did I put in throughout the year? Outside of class. So if they're plateauing, they can see, did I do extra work outside of class? Was it my own fault? Was it the teacher's fault? What other forces made me unmotivated? And a little checklist throughout the year on the back. Did I do the homework? Did I revise my notes? Did I read in English? We, have, we provide lots of activities outside of class. We have lots of free classes here. Um, when students go to them, they enjoy them, but a lot of students don't go to them. Okay? And here, I'd like to finish on a positive point. What did I improve on the most? And what can I do in English now? So you want to make this more positive than negative, so more things to look back on and record them, okay? So, in a mixed dynamic class of short-term learners, it's quite easy. Um, I deal with a lot of long-term learners here, a lot of one nationalities. They don't have this motivation because they have to work, get up at ridiculous o'clock in the morning, come to school, work a lot and sometimes we have to realize we're not motivational speakers 
at the end of the day, end of the day we're <laughs> TEFL teachers. We're not yes men, yes women, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm not a psycholinguistic. Sometimes you need to let go. <laughs> to painfully quote um, Dorney that talked about, uh, anyone ever watched the film Freedom Riders? This was the quote they placed on the students, unteachables. If you have a student that doesn't want to learn, what can you do? You can try to implement these tasks. There's only so much you can do. Sometimes you have to let go and let the student reflect on themselves. Okay? Uh, we've tried rewards and punishments. I banned the word work and sleep. Talking about past activities. What do you do at the weekend? You can't say work, can't say sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you can't punish students. They're ideal more, mostly with adult learners. I'm not going to take a phone off someone that has family or has a, a work job. So you need, they can use their phones, okay? Not being self arrogant and giving myself five stars. <laughs> <laughs> five points to reflect on. Uh, we create the motivation for class. Maintaining is very important. <laughs> Encouraging it. Okay? Reflecting on yourself, the teacher, reflecting on the students. And at the end, um, I think that David said you should uh, end on an inspirational quote or the duty. Um, you can bring a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. So sometimes you need to let go, and you can only do so much. Okay.